So in the previous segment, we were talking about these cosmic cycles. And they matter because, you see, you know, we go about our lives and we're all too busy. We're debating back and forth. But in the big scheme of things, they matter. And the reason that we have all this talk today is because fortunately, fortunately for us, Many, many people in the past, they knew this stuff and they tried to tell us. And they made incredible, incredible clock devices, mechanisms, things to tell us, hey, look up, watch the stars. Why did they do that for a long time? Because there was a lot of importance to it. And it's still important. So now we have modern science. We have these things we can watch. Now, one of the things that we have to watch out for, of course, is these strange things like comets. They come through. All the ancient people told us about that. Another thing we have to watch out is for the type of energy that's on our Earth, the type of energy that's on our Sun. And the Sun changes polarity. If the, change, the polarity changes with the Sun, it's also going to affect us. No doubt about it. So it's all a cosmic physics, electronics thing that's going on. Now, as we know, on a massive, massive scale, if this cycle here is around 24,000 years, this one here, 24,000 years, on a massive, massive scale, these incredible power generating systems here, the big one and the little one, and of course the little one here, I got the big one in blue and the little one in red, because on a big, big scale, in a three-dimensional system, you have like all these things moving, and the momentum of this is, you know, changes that, so when they switch places here, the sun is going to go, whoa, you know, there might, I could see how, when our system gets down to this point, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if the entire actual pole of the Earth physically flipped upside down, or certainly by then the magnetic pole would, I'm sure, as it goes through the system. So now, all of this stuff is like as above, so below. Now, in this big, huge, huge cosmic atom, you might say, which is part of a huge, huge chakra of energy, you might say, on a vast, vast scale, you might say, call it a god or whatever, this big, huge pool of energy has a has a, a peak at this point. Just like we have the top of our Earth, we have a place where our magnetic energy comes in, light energy, like through the aurora. There's this huge system, and generally speaking, through a point, there's a point through where a stream of cosmic energy is cutting through this system. I don't know, I'm not an astronomer, but somewhere along the lines, there's a inflow stream of, of various kinds of supreme cosmic energy, some kind of system that has to be happening because this is how things work. Now, the ancient people tried to tell us about this, and I'm going to refer you again to a few books here, Madame Blavatsky, The Secret Doctrine. Now, that talks more about the Earth systems, but there are some very, very fascinating talks because there's some very, very ancient stanzas that are talking about these, they use these poetical terminology to talk about these great wheels. And what they're talking about is these massive things. And they're saying, well, there's this huge, huge, vast system going on. And because of that vast system, the reason that there's different kinds of beings on the earth or in any other place is because as life is being this, and light when different kinds of light comes into a system, life-giving light, when good life-giving giving light comes into a system, after a period of darkness, you might say, naturally, just like in springtime, boy, I tell you what, man, when March comes along, sometimes there's a few days and bang, it's spring, man, everything is just starting to turn green. When the desert sometimes hasn't had rain for a long time and it rains and then boom, you have flowers in three days, everything just boom, you know. What is going on, in my humble opinion, is that we're going to go through a system where the polarity switches. It, it'll switch on many different levels, just like the magnetic field that's filling around our Earth constantly fluctuates and is very much in, in play. Just like that, just like our own bodies have to get into harmony, the sun system is exposed to whatever energy is out there. And that energy tends to affect spin in one way or another. That's the way it works. It has to affect the spin in somehow, and you get closer to, it's not just gravity out there. There's things that we don't see. There's things that could hit us that could be coming. There could be a bolt of something coming out of the blue. 
that we have no clue about. I mean, it would, well, it could happen. I'm not saying it will, but it could. Probably not. I think it happens very rarely and, you know. But the point is that things shift. And shifting has to do with the inner function of consciousness. If we shift our own understanding, our physical life will change. That's how it's very powerful. When you switch polarity from one to another, it suddenly changes it. That's why in electronics right now we have these things called the square waves, and these are the switching pulses. They measure every one. They count every one. And they switch on and off. Well, nature has some things like that. Pulses. Pop, pop, pop. Now, the potential between this one, maybe it's only one volt, and this is zero, and not much power, so maybe it's just a very, very small amount. But in a transistor, a slight switch of polarity can change a whole bunch of stuff. One switch here and another switch there, and boom, there's a whole bunch of things. Just like that game where you have the positive and the negative, and you play this game, and you try to hammer someone in with a black and white little disc, and then you place them a certain way, and you have to turn over the other ones. And it's like, in our system, there are positions in time and space where the electric currents, the magnetic currents, and things that we don't necessarily perceive, so-called rays that come out of the the heavens, the literal heavens, and are flowing out and in our system. The earth needs some support. We need blood. We need water. We need whatever we need to be alive. The earth needs something too. And the earth needs currents. The earth needs electricity. And when it gets a whole bunch of electricity, boy, it's going to expand. It's gonna, something's going to happen. And I think we're headed for some possibly a slight expansion, a warming. Let's say when, if, when something expands, as all we all know, it starts to so when it gets hot, it starts to expand. Now, there's, there's the physical heat that we touch in the stove and so on, but there's another kind of heat that is basically an intensity of energy, an intensity of electrical magnetic energy that's like a plasma. And when something like that affects something like it could be as hard as a, as a rock, but it could just crush it. It could have explosions. And, you know, there are places on the earth where there's water right near magma. And you know what that would do? I mean, it would boom, you know. So, I think that we're going to see a lot of changes in the next decades. And I'm going to make more of these videos about this because this is something I've been researching for a long time. And I'm very grateful to so many people who I've learned from online. And keep up the good work because we all need information to figure out what's going on. The political stuff, yes, we can yeah, 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 yeah. But meanwhile, we have to consider what we can have to observe things for ourselves, think it out, read what we've been told from ancient traditions, and just think here. Get a clue. The reason that their predictions, the 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 Christian predictions and these religious predictions are really, in my humble opinion, really they're really about astronomy. That's why they come true because they're trying, well they come true somewhat because they know the astronomy. They know the, not just where the positions are, they know what kind of energy comes from. That's why, see if you say, well I know a stream of energy comes from that direction. Hey, what's a good star up there? Hey, there's a good one. Let's name it the such and such. We'll give it the symbol and we know, okay, that's where that particular kind of energy comes from. Because I can feel it, I can see it, or somehow you have a way to perceive it. These ancient people figured some things out. So we have calendars, but we don't know how precise their date is because there's been a lot of, I mean, we don't know really. There's, I think the Mayans probably had something there because they weren't tampered with really. Uh, with the Gregorian calendar, calendar in the East, I think the Hindus probably have a good calendar. But regardless, we have to observe with our new instruments what's actually going on and we can see some of this stuff lining up. And I'll have to go into another segment here so thanks for watching, um, and I really enjoyed the feedback. Thanks.